Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to my show. This is Balanced Life with me, your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. I am conversations that hopefully, and I most certainly think we are, connecting to a healthier you. And I like this to be interactive with you. So I want you to become part of the conversation. And today is one of my favorite items that we're going to be talking about and how healthy it can actually be for you. So do call in if you're listening live. And if you're not, you can go to my Facebook page, which is Fit by Design, otherwise known as Balanced Life. If you go to Facebook, you can make a comment or ask a question. You can either do it live or if you're watching this, Post show, go ahead. I look at there constantly and I will answer your sh uh, question and my guest will too. So if you want to call in though, you need to call area code 323 524 2599. And as of about two months ago, that is a brand new phone number. So throw away the old one. That's the one to call to make a comment, ask a question, and become part of this conversation today because we'd love to hear from you because this is a subject near and dear to my tummy. <laughs> so <laughs> today, for all of you that know me, then you know this next statement to be true. I love chocolate. Yes, especially dark chocolate. And I've been on a mission to find a brand that not only tastes good, but is as good for you as you, but is good for you too. And guess what? I actually found it. My guest today, Catherine Lewis, is the founder and creator of the single origin bean to bar Moruga chocolate. This quality one region chocolate from Maruga Trinidad has a wonderful flavor due to its unique location. Catherine oversees everything from start to finish, the process in which we're going to dig into today. So to hear this beautiful love story behind the evolution of Maruga chocolate and the entire process to create a healthy brand, will you please welcome my guest to the show today, Catherine Lewis. Woo! Hi, Catherine. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, yes. Nice to have you. So a little background. I was on a mission. I've been on a mission since I started uh, doing this show. Um, actually, way back when um, Dell and I had a show together mm -hmm. called Dell and Debbie's Mind, Body, and Soul. And, you know, part of the body thing is putting healthy things into it. But so many people like chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it can be good for you, and it can be bad for you. And we're going to talk about that difference today. And I was on this mission, and I went to a wine festival, and there was your booth. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I need to taste this chocolate. It looks amazing. And sure, lo and behold, it tasted amazing, too. Mm -hmm. And I said, you need to be on my show. Here's my card. And you reached out. And so now we finally have a date, and here you are. And I'm so excited. And after... Um, Digging a little bit deeper into your story, it made me even more excited because I love the story behind it. And it's part of the reason why I do the show. I don't do the show to necessarily sell products or services. I do it for the story of the people that created those products and services that are actually for the better good of, and people's well-being through a passion that they have. So getting right into it, I want to hear your story. So tell me a little bit about you from the beginning. Okay, from the beginning. I was born and raised in Southern California, and um, uh, my background is in drama and acting. We were talking about that. I bit. have similar story. I'm born and raised here, and I have a degree in theater and acting, too. Yes. So. And... Um, Theater is actually, well, um, acting is what got me down to Maruga in Trinidad and Tobago to make chocolate. Um, I was, Which is, who would have, like, would what? Have yeah. Unless you were shooting, were you shooting there? Or um, what happened? How did so that happen? my now husband, who is from... 
Trinidad from Maruga, um, he was doing a documentary on Maruga, and uh, he invited me to come down there, and I was living in Hollywood at the time. So let's go back. How did you, you originally met him on Mm -hmm. a family trip. Yes. How old were you? I was um, 15. You were 15, and your family went to Trinidad, to yes, the Caribbean. Yes, And how did you meet your husband? How did that come about? Yeah, so so we met on a family trip, and we um, really uh, got close, and he got close to my family, and we just stayed in touch. We were friends for— Just you just being a local person that you met on the trip? Um, or? No, no, we were doing some missionary work, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so now I got yeah, it. So, All right. So I met him on that, and um, we just stayed— friends and um, later on you know he wanted to do this documentary for Maruga and uh, he knew that I was into acting and uh, film and stuff so he just invited me to come down there and when I went down there as an adult you know we realized that we wanted the same things out of life we fell in love I stayed there and then you stayed you like literally moved there I moved you left there. everything, everything that LA. you had going on in LA mm-hmm. so at that point you were in college? You were at, you said... I was out of college. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts yes. in Hollywood. So I had finished that, and I was doing some projects and so on. Um, but something was calling me down to Maruga, you know, to, to stay put there. And um, after um, some months there, I discovered the cocoa industry that had collapsed in Trinidad. A lot of people had abandoned their cocoa plantations and estates. What was the reason for that? Because there wasn't a lot of money. There wasn't fair wages mm-hmm. um, for It's the a cocoa lot of labor farmers. for not a lot of pay. Yes, it's very labor intensive and it's a long process. So from the trees, you have cocoa pods. It's a fruit. And from that, you get the bean inside, which is what you get chocolate the from. Cacao. The cacao. The cacao bean, which yes. we're going to dig deep into that whole process. Yes, because there are a lot of health benefits to it and so on. But it takes a long process. There's fermentation, sun drying, roasting. Nobody really realizes that. And yes. until I read the story behind this, I mean, I d- I've researched chocolate in the process before, and I've actually been to a factory where they kind of, you know, show you a video on mm-hmm. start to finish and all of that. And it, w- it was also a, a fair trade, mm-hmm. sustainably farmed type mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. But um, still, I never really dug into it until I read your story. Mm-hmm. So, but going back, you, so you... When you moved because of your husband, Mm -hmm. was it? Did he introduce you to the sort of what was going on in on the plantations going down, or did you discover that for yourself by living there? It was um, it was both. Uh, Okay, his family, his grandmother had lived her whole life on um, the cocoa plantation, working in the fields, and she knew everything about cocoa. And when I moved down there, she was in her 90s, and she actually actually passed away a year after I got there. Oh. And so she, you know, she could barely talk, but she still mustered up the strength to tell me the story about Coco and her life in the cocoa fields and um, what that meant to her and even how to roast the beans, how long to leave them in the sun. So I learned from the elders in the community I how love to make that. chocolate. I love that. So th- did it? spark something in you when she was telling you the stories about the process and mm-hmm. and and how you know rich this land is that mm-hmm. no one's really taking advantage of and what she used to be into Did, mm-hmm. what what sparked in you that yeah it was almost you know this this very as you said rich a rich story a rich um heritage and tradition that they had as a culture uh, the cocoa, because so many people used to work in the cocoa industry, and then it kind of collapsed. As I said, there wasn't enough wages and so on, and people started turning to other things. And um, so when I heard the whole story of it, I kind of got, you know, enamored with it and um, and kind of fell in love with the whole process from, from bean to bar, even from tree to bar. Yeah, from the whole, from tree to bean to bar, that yes. whole process. So, so yeah. did that become part of the documentary that your husband was making or yeah, it um, did? Yes, so we're, we're still working on it. We're doing, we're going to be doing a series um, about Maruga. Okay. And uh, something that I didn't um, tell you before is he got the title Prince of Maruga, because he does a lot of community works and we we have a museum down there and we're actually live streaming from the museum page and it's called the National Cocoa and Chocolate Museum 
And we have these old relic buildings from the heydays of co- the cocoa industry. What were the heydays? What like about, the years? Yeah, about a hundred years ago, from okay. like the eighteen hundreds to like nineteen twenty, even to nineteen fifty. Okay. Yes, because Trinidad was a British. Um, colony. colony. Yeah. Yes. So so they sent a lot of their cocoa to England. Yes. Makes before. sense. Yeah. Yes. And they didn't make chocolates locally. So that was my mission. When I got there, I was like, I'm going to teach myself how to make chocolate. And I ended up getting um, equipment, machinery. But I first started out with um, one of those manual grinders that they use down there. So I learned like the traditional way. And then like I a grinder, almost yes. like a coffee grinder, right? Yes. Yeah, one of the ma- old manual coffee grinders. Yeah, and the ground. more research I did, I said, wait, I can, you know, make a company. I can make chocolate, you know, from scratch and keep it organic and healthy and, you know, bring it back to, to my culture, to California, because I know people really respect and value fairly traded products, things that are sustainable, uh, things that are organic. Organic, and, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. So. So, so, so you kind of felt um, compelled, if you will, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you were on a mission to bring this back and not farm it out, but to do it there and yes. to do it within the region that it came from. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about, so you moved there. Were you living back and forth? Did you give up your acting career completely or? No, I didn't completely. I still did um, some acting even down in Trinidad. And okay. I'm even working on writing some um short films and so on to do there because it's a beautiful landscape. It's raw and natural and untouched. It's yes. R- virgin territory. So there's a lot of cool projects that we can film down there. And so I've made some contacts down there to continue the acting and this uh, inspiration I have to, to create. You know? no, lovely. Yes. And in the meantime, you, you know, researched and mm-hmm. developed mm-hmm. Um, and, and kind of renewed the mm-hmm. whole uh, chocolate industry, at least on your end, yes. o- for over there. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about how that all came. So you so you became intrigued mm-hmm. because of your husband's grandmother. Mm-hmm. And then you said, I'm going to make this all, like you were just saying mm-hmm. earlier, happen again. What, what did you have to go through to get everything up and running? And talk mm-hmm. about, well, I want to talk about the region too, because you, you, uh, your story talks about how rich the land is, like mm-hmm. just like when you get grapes for wine, mm-hmm. cacao beans, it, it depends, you know, the taste of the chocolate has something to do with the environment in which it is grown in. Yes. So I love that. Mm-hmm. We don't we take all of that for granted. We don't mm-hmm. think about that at all. Talk about how you you know what this land was like and how you knew that this could be a really unique way to farm this chocolate. Yes. Well, the location of Maruga is as I said uh, on Trinidad and it's right across the waters from Venezuela. So we're in the Caribbean on the very um, southern eastern side of the Caribbean. Okay. So the soil is very unique because it's so near the water. And then even the crops that grow around there, you know, there's bananas, papayas, coffee, all these different things. Oh, love it. Uh, Yeah. And they're all good chocolate covered, too. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah. But as you were saying, wine or chocolate is similar to wine, that where the cacao is grown, it really affects the flavor. So if you're getting chocolate that's grown in West Africa, if it's grown in Venezuela, um, Ecuador, all these different regions, has a slightly different flavor. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people in the market are turning to single origin, because as with wine, you know, you have these different blends and so on. But people like it when they can taste the the region. The region, the very specific grape from that region. Yes, yeah, yeah, because it's pure and you can um, find different notes. It's exciting, you know, you put it on your palate and you, wow, this is fruity, this is nutty, you know. And um, recently my husband and I acquired a a beach property and that's where we're getting our cacao from. So it's really exciting um, using these beans from this particular location near the... Near the water, and you can t- once these beans are harvested, and once mm-hmm. the chocolate you know comes to fruition, you can actually taste the difference yes. in the bars, yeah, right? Yeah, you can. And um, as with with wine and, and um, different foods, you taste certain notes at first, and then you let it linger on your palate, and you taste some other you know other notes. Yeah. And even within the island of Trinidad itself, 
you'll taste chocolate from other chocolatiers and it tastes different, even though it's a small, a relatively small island. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's different flavors. It, it, yeah. Really interesting. So, so did you have the beach property, and then you went and decided to farm from there, or did you farm from a different area? I farmed from different areas, and we started a cooperative. So we got other farmers that, um, you know, were thinking about abandoning their their task of doing all of this cocoa labor, and we said, you "No, must love you." <laughs> yeah, so it's like, no, we can brought um, them back to life. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, we can pay you fair wages, and we can all have it, you know, in a in a bank, as it were, and um, use this chocolate and uh, this cocoa to make value added products. Because before these were these cocoa beans were just shipped to. Europe and America, and the locals didn't taste their own chocolate, the finished product. Right, and once those beans were out of your hands, their Mm -hmm. hands, they lost control of everything else that got um, put into it. Right. Whereas you have control to make this quality chocolate now. Yeah, and oversee every aspect because, you know, a lot of chocolatiers in other countries from where the cocoa is grown, you know, they have to just trust that the cocoa farmer is doing the proper work, you know, that there's no, um, y- you know, it's in a clean place, everything, you know. Right. So, yeah, we get to oversee every single aspect and ensure that it's quality. So that even, you know, gives me um, excitement. Of course. You know? Well, it gives you a satisfaction, yes. for sure, excited yeah. satisfaction, mm-hmm. that you are really from ground to, you know, mm-hmm. to table, if you will, you yes. know, because um, it is... It, you have complete control, mm-hmm. and and you can create this product because we're going to get into all the health benefits mm-hmm. of cacao because there are many health benefits of cacao, yes. but they all get depleted when you add things to right. a bar to mm-hmm. chocolate, so which you didn't do, and mm-hmm. there's so much satisfaction in knowing mm-hmm. that you're actually having this amazing product come to the public. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about what it takes to farm, um, how that you said it grows from the ground mm-hmm. and and that it's a fruit. So mm-hmm. let's just start from the beginning of the life of a bean yeah. <laughs> and how it comes to be and mm-hmm. what areas uh, you know um, are conducive to like you know you can't uh, grow grapes and mm-hmm. and create wine in every region of the world. Right. Though they're f- trying to figure that out yes. right now too. Um, so I'm imagining that's the same with chocolate. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about you know the process and all of that. Yeah. So cacao grows around the equ- equator. So the countries that are closest to the equator is where cacao grows. That's the there best. There you go. Cli- <laughs> yeah. That's the best climate for it. The best soil and um, so that's why you find most countries that you're getting. Um, chocolate from or cacao from is around the equator. Now, um, in the global market, it's come to people's attention that um, in West Africa, they're using children slavery and uh, to to pick the cacao. Because it's very labor intensive. Yes. Yeah, so now these big companies like Hershey's and so on are trying to, to stop that and even look at areas and regions that aren't doing that, that they're paying the workers fairly and they're not using this um, you Thank know, goodness, ch- children's slavery. Thank or anything. goodness for awareness, and that yes. these large corporations are are not buying into it. Yeah, because yeah, it's labor intensive, and you know, from tree to bar, uh, as you were saying, it's it's um, you have to grow the the tree, and it's going to be a different flavor if it's a young tree or if it's a mature tree. Okay. So our trees are really cool. They've been around for some of them even a hundred years. Oh, I love it! And they're still producing. You know, and um, we harvest them, and they're completely organic. You know, we don't use any chem- harsh chemicals or anything. So, what is the what are the certain times of year? Just like with the grapes, are mm-hmm. harvest times. What what time of year is it for you in? Um, yeah, so we usually Trinidad. have it like um, October is a good time, but we we try to harvest it. Um, we just check the trees, you mm-hmm. know, and um, and when we have a big harvest, you know, we try to produce enough and ferment and sun dry so that throughout the year we have cocoa to make chocolate. So going back to the process, so uh-huh. you harvest the beans, then yes. what happens? So well, first the cacao, it's a fruit, it's a pod. Okay. So it's actually a pretty large 
fruit. Right. And you cut it open and take the insides out. And is that manual labor has to be done that manually? Yes. So you open it up with a machete, actually. Okay. Like a coconut almost. Yeah, like a coconut. Exactly. And we take the inside out, which is this um, pulp. And, you know, people are starting to make cacao smoothies from the actual fruit. Oh, you from know, the fruit, not from the, from fruit. the powder from the beans. From Some people do it from the beans, but the actual fruit, people are starting to make juices oh, and smoothies. Oh, yeah. interesting. I didn't know that. So because, that has, yeah. does that have the same health um, components to it as the bean? Yeah, does? The, the fruit does definitely have health components and... Um, it, you know, it has this almost, you know, Oh, we tangy. have a phone call. Oh, okay. Is that right, Kurt? We have a call. Okay, okay. hang on one sec. Hello, caller, are you there? Hello? Hello? Hi, caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm calling uh, from Los Angeles, actually. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for calling in today. Um, I'm glad that you're listening. Do you have a question or a comment for Catherine or myself I- about our subject today? Yeah, I do. Um, I actually had two questions for Catherine. Um, First, I wanted to know where we can buy the chocolate. Um, And then I wanted to know her favorite part of the whole chocolate process. Oh, good one. Good one. Yeah, we uh, we were going to get to that. This is a good question to bring Mm -hmm. up now. Yes. So where can we where can we get the chocolate? Yeah, well, thank you, Sarah, for calling. This um, chocolate is available online. Um, we have a website, marugacoco.wordpress.com. Okay, we we'll put also, that up on the screen for everybody. Yes, also on our social media, you can always DM us, and I can um, ship the order out to you as you know as soon as possible. So we have an Instagram platform and Facebook. And on those social media platforms, we, we get back really quickly. And um, on email, we're marugachocolate at gmail.com. So people can email you directly yes, and yes. say, I want a case yeah, of this. And exactly. We're going to talk about all the different um, products that you create through the chocolate. Yes. And then I also do events. So I post that on my social media. So, uh, you know, in Huntington Beach, I'm having an event uh, February 8th. And we're going to be selling chocolate at that. Um, That's so- uh next saturday right yes. yeah okay yeah, so, away from saturday yeah so I, I host different like chocolate parties we do chocolate and wine pairings you know chocolate covered strawberries little truffles all sorts of different things you know if people request a chocolate party you know i can kind of doctor it up to oh, how I they love want that. it oh my god yes. that would be my heaven <laughs> yeah so we <laughs> do have party. events as well <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah we have the online store as i said and yeah through our social media and, and email and then at the Coco Museum, if you're located in Trinidad, we sell there. You as sell well. there. Are yes. you trying to get into any stores like health food stores, Whole Foods, and some of the other um, yeah. chains like that? Like yes, that's, Erewhon and mm-hmm, that's the next step. Okay. So yeah, I was I had established the business down in Trinidad where I'm making the cocoa or where we produce the cocoa from. How long has it been? How long ago was um, that? About two years, but I've been doing a process of learning how to to master it to be a chocolatier and then even to get the flavors that I want and everything. So it's new. It's in its infancy, which is why you're doing great. I didn't realize it was so new. Yeah. And I met you like four months ago, five months ago. So that was only a year and a half. Gee, that I didn't realize. I love it. I love that it's building. Mm -hmm. So and to answer Sarah, you're still there, right? Um, Yes, hi. (laughs) And to answer her second question, what's your favorite part of the process? Mm, My favorite part? Um, I think, you know, just making the chocolate itself. The next stage from what we were talking about before is the melanger. It's a machine that goes for at least 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. And it's stone on stone grinders. It's um. Is that a hand process? No, it's no, not a hand that's process. That's the machine. It's a machine. Stone on stone. Yeah, okay. so it's stone wheels grinding on a stone base. Ooh, cool. And that's what how you get chocolate. So the cacao is grinding for about an hour to two hours. Then you add the cane sugar and then what other components you want. If you want, you know, milk or 
uh, or walnut whatever. or yeah. almonds. I noticed you have a bar yes. with almonds and coconut and that kind of thing. Yeah. So then wow. you you get to experience this uh, unique life that chocolate has because it starts as the cacao bean, the nib, you know, which a lot of people have tasted now. Yeah. Nibs um, sell well. Yes. Yeah. So it has a strong flavor, but the more and more it runs in this melanger machine, new notes, new aromas come out of the chocolate, oh, which is really cool. Things we don't know about chocolate chocolate that are so I love digging into this because mm-hmm. it, you know again we just take it for granted mm-hmm. we have no idea that there is a long tedious and wonderful process that goes into mm-hmm. creating these flavors mm-hmm. Sarah did that answer your question yeah thank you so much Catherine keep thank going you. it's great oh, good. <laughs> keep listening we're going to yeah. dig in even deeper thank mm-hmm. you so much for your call today Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So that's that's really cool. And it's mm-hmm. bringing us back to what we were talking about, the process. So after you harvest mm-hmm. the um, the bean mm-hmm. and, we, you, and the fruit, we were just talking about how you can make smoothies from mm-hmm. the actual fruit. So now you've got – so you've got the bean. So mm-hmm. then what happens? So that's – Yeah, so after the bean, we ferment it just like um, alcohol. Okay. We put it in, um, how they do it down there culturally is they wrap it in banana leaves. And Ooh. Inside well, of, that must affect flavor too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we have cedar wood boxes. So just like um, certain like bourbons are distilled in the oak barrels and yeah. that gives it a unique the oaky, flavor. The yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. So these cedar wood boxes give it a different flavor even, you know? Oh, that's so it's very really cool. Unique. So this, how long is that process from... Yeah, so fermentation, you kind of have to gauge it, but it can take a week to two weeks. Oh, that's not too bad. Too, no, it's yeah. not too bad. And then after that, you sun dry it. There are mechanical dryers, but the flavor is completely different when oh, you sun dry it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you want to do it more naturally right. in the sun. So yeah. is that hanging up the, um, what, do you hang it up in the banana leaf? No, 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 no. So okay. um, you put it on, we have these um, wooden floorboards that soak in the sun and they're in the traditional cocoa house in Trinidad where they used to sun dry. We um, we redid the the wood that we sun dried on uh, mm-hmm. but we still do it in the historical place. Um, so before when they had these big estates and plantations they had these cocoa houses and they would have these Roofs that would slide back like and sun forth, roofs. Yes, yeah, like sun roofs. open and closed. So we still, cool. Very yeah, cool. we still do that because we give tours at this museum, mm-hmm. and people get to kind of relive the history. Wow, of, of, of the whole cocoa process. I bet people are so intrigued. Yes, when... and culturally they do a cocoa dance. You know how certain countries like stomp on the, the rain grapes? dance or the grapes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So we still do that. So we have people do drumming and singing, and um, I, I have that as a question for you because yeah. I saw that mm-hmm. and I'm like, wait, what's a cocoa yeah, dance? We, I mean, we don't do use those beans for the chocolate we make, but that's just a cultural item. That uh, we have. Right, yeah. right. Just a yeah, just a fun, significant thing to kind of, I don't know, honor yes. the process, I would I would think, and get people uh, more, more, even more excited about it. Yes. Have you noticed um, with the museum showing the whole process and everything, is it getting busy? Do you see progress happening in terms of tourism? Yes, we have big tourist schools, um, different um, established uh, corporations and groups. They'll have uh, busloads coming down, which is really nice yeah. because... People are really interested in this because it's it's a rich history of the culture. So a lot of people are, you know, their great grandmother, or great grandfather worked in the in the cocoa plantation, oh, or, you know, and nice. we're considered deep south in the island, we're the most southern point, and um, so people get to go on this like nice road trip, this excursion, and uh, go to the museum and experience culture, and we have unique artifacts there. That you know are a hundred years old, yeah, yeah. to that so region. So everything that has to do with the cocoa process, we have there on display. So people, you know, get this nostalgia when so they come. So fabulous! And see. That is so cool. Yes. And 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 to think that you just kind of stumbled upon this culture and then mm-hmm. married into it mm-hmm. is even more cool. You mm-hmm. know that you're not Trinidad born and mm-hmm. it isn't it. You you took something that was so. Um, 
so important to that region and you reunited it you mm-hmm. relit it you re you know you you put the flame to it if you will <laughs> yes so um so it's two years now Has the museum been open longer than that or the museum opened in um 2018 Ooh. actually yeah so just barely mm-hmm. two yeah. years yeah and so everything's just getting mm-hmm. off the ground right yes. now yes so you so once you get Going back to the process, once the fermentation ends and now do they go into the grinder machine? I forget, Moray, what's it called? The, the melanger. The melanger, yes. Yeah. So we have the old time uh, hand mills and people get to grind the cocoa the old fashioned way when they're at the museum. Oh, okay. And then we have the melanger on display and people can even make bean to bar chocolate themselves. So we'll have school groups. Come. All in that one day, they, yeah, they can. Yeah, so they can. We have chocolate samples, you know, the already finished product. Yeah. But they can see the bean to bar process. You know, it will take a while for their chocolate to finish, but we'll give them chocolate samples ahead of time, you know? Oh, yeah. Because the whole chocolate process is so long. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. But it's great for the education system there because kids, you know, adore chocolate, obviously, but we have a healthy chocolate, which is good. You know, it's not right, which is that they can see. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. That there aren't. I want to talk about. Um, the organic part of it and the ingredients of it too. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I found out really early when I'm a mom of two grown girls that Mm -hmm. are around your age. And um, so I was in the public school system when they were going through, you know, like kindergarten through junior high. And one of the things I realized very early, and for me as a kid, because I call myself a processed kid, and that's Mm -hmm. kind of how I got into the health and wellness industry, is one of the things I realized is that as a kid or has kids, having kids, they don't realize where food comes from Mm -hmm. and what it takes to create a product. And so very early on in the school system when my kids were little, I realized that everything was processed that it kind of looked like my refrigerator growing up, their school cafeteria. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, my kids aren't going to eat here. But even more, there's a lot of kids eating here, which is so unhealthy for them. Mm-hmm. Why are we giving them this start when we they should see where food comes from? So a group got together and, and uh, we created this gardening angel program where we took an area of asphalt in the back of the school and we cleaned up the ground and we brought in organic dirt and we started to um, we started to garden. So we created fruits and vegetables that we could grow rather quickly. In some cases we bought trees and just planted them so we could, you know, get the fruit really quickly. And we wanted the kids to do it themselves. So the parents with the kids, so they could see the process of where food isn't just magically appear in the mm-hmm. supermarket and then on your table. There's a whole Thing behind it, you know, mm-hmm. and they appreciated it so much more that they got to make their own salads. And we would take the vegetables over to the local pizza parlor and say, could you make a vegetable pizza out of this? And then they got to eat their vegetable pizza. So it was a little bit of, you know, the process, but also healthy food. So they got sort of a love for vegetables, not only because it had vegetables on it, but because they organically grew their own. Mm. And I think that's so important for this coming generation and generations to follow to get on it much sooner than my generation or even your generation Mm -hmm. has. So this whole process about chocolate, again, I think people just had no idea what it takes. And you're actually giving them that education yes. by coming to your museum and experiencing gives them a much better um, appreciation and, mm. and, and they can actually really taste it, you yes, know, because they, they understand that they're not eating chemicals. Right. I mm-hmm. love that you're doing that. Yeah, because it's, you know, 100% pure. Yeah. You know, and you can taste it and feel good about eating chocolate, like you said, you know, because for a lot of people, chocolate is this guilty pleasure, like, oh, I'll have some, you know, I'll have a truffle or have a little chocolate. And then you feel bad because you just think you ate crap. crap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you have it this way where it's organic and natural products and so on, then you can feel good about it and, you know, for your own health and so yeah. on. Yeah. Let's talk about 
you're then, you know, which leads me to, I want to get to the benefits, but let's talk about your product specifically. What are mm-hmm. the ingredients of your dark chocolate bars, let's say? Yeah, so our so. dark chocolate is cacao and cane sugar. Okay. Simple. It's okay. dark chocolate and, you know, we don't add any preservatives or additives or anything. It's pure. And, um, yeah, so I, I follow different chocolatiers, chocolate companies, and I realized this was the best way for me and um, how I was, you know, concocting different recipes and so on. So you were experimenting and, with yes, different ways a lot to of make a really healthy bar. Right, yeah, and I realized if you just keep it pure and simple, simple. that's the best. It's the case for so many things, yes. you know. and even to showcase the flavor of the bean itself. Like I said, it has such a unique flavor from the region it comes from. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to add a bunch of stuff because on its own, the bean is you know has a beautiful flavor. Yeah, which yeah. again, people have no idea about. They mm-hmm. just think, and that's too bad because so much of chocolate is generic because yes. the fillers mm-hmm. that they all the additives mm-hmm. are the same. To, all these different brands. Mm-hmm. So some are more sweet than others. Maybe mm-hmm. there's a little more sugar, a little bit more of this, or a little more of this chemical or that chemical in each different brand. But for the most part, I mean, I think it's this waxy, I can't yes. even eat a processed mm-hmm. bar. I mm-hmm. have to go pretty much 100% uh, natural, mm-hmm. you know, and the sugar part, I always look for the lowest sugar mm-hmm. when there is, when I'm getting a bar. But like I said, I've been on a mission to find the perfect bar mm-hmm. that I know, not that I want to eat a whole bar at once, right. but that if I am going to mm-hmm. take a few squares of a bar, mm-hmm. I know I'm getting something, at least something organic, mm-hmm. something with the least amount of ingredients and mm-hmm. something in this case that actually has a lot of health benefits for right. you. So right. let's talk about the health benefits of cacao. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things? I um, I read everything mm-hmm. about, uh, you know, what you know about it. And mm-hmm. then I also looked up other health benefits. So mm-hmm. it's amazing what cacao has. Let's tell our audience. Yeah, so there's actually a lot of benefits that come from the antioxidants that are in cacao. So it's very heart healthy. Uh, it can even lower blood pressure blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's very good for cardiovascular health and even for brain function. You know, it has a certain amount of caffeine, not as much as coffee, but a good amount that you can still get a a sustainable energy. Yeah. You know, if you do eat these, yeah, Yeah. if you do eat these, you know, so super sugary ones, you'll get a high and then low, you know, fall back down from the sugar. And from the chemicals Chemicals. that your body's going, wait, how do I process this? What's going on here? Yeah. Right. But if you eat, you know, a natural chocolate, then you have a more sustained energy, a more healthy energy. Right. Yes. So exactly. So it gives you a good, um, you know, focus, brain focus. Yeah, it does. It it has, I mean, from what I was uh, able to find out, I've known this about cacao because being Mm -hmm. in the nutrition field, um, you know, using cacao a hundred percent organic in you know your smoothies, as mm-hmm. you were saying, or mm-hmm. even to build a chocolate dessert of some kind. If you just mm-hmm. go with cacao and a little bit of uh, you know sugar. Th- and then other um, natural ingredients, then you can create all kinds of wonderful things. Mm-hmm. But you're right, it has uh, it lowers high blood pressure, mm-hmm. antioxidant capacity, improves brain health, like you mm-hmm. said, cardiovascular, it balances cholesterol levels, regulates blood sugar levels, which is really important, relieves bronchial asthma, speeds up healing, mm-hmm. uh, weight management, and enhances mood, mm-hmm. because you know what, your your serotonin and toten- serotonin levels go mm-hmm. up when you're doing something that makes you happy and yes. eating chocolate makes a lot of people happy yes. so and if you're doing it in a healthy way that's great um, it treats constipation it's an anti-cancer there's uh, mm-hmm. benefits um, it, there it is because uh, of the antioxidants and the free radicals mm-hmm. it, it helps fight against the free radicals treats copper deficiency reduces chronic fatigue syndrome. It's good for your skin mm-hmm. um, and neuroprotective properties, which we talked about. It prevents magnesium deficiency. So yes. I was able to find almost 20 things yes. about um, the cocoa, the benefits of cocoa. Yeah. And to have it 
as pure as yours, mm-hmm. these benefits have to be, you know, very high on the list, which yes. I think is is so remarkable. Yeah, and it has high levels of magnesium, as you said, and iron, which is, you know, you know minerals that. that our body yes. lacks because so many things deplete. The environment itself takes that away from right. us. Right, so you know? it's very, yes, um, rich in minerals. So yes. It's so good for your health. It's you know? You're doing such a good thing, you know. <laughs> you're satisfying people's, you know, like you said, mm. sort of treat craving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a healthy way. Right. And in, you know, we're down to 10 minutes. So mm-hmm. I want to talk about your specific product. Yes. Uh, we talked a little bit about where you can get it, but mm-hmm. I also want to talk about what different products that you make and, yes. um, you know, and we can uh, sort of, we can do a taste test if you yes. want. Okay. <laughs> I'll be your guinea yeah. pig. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, so. yeah, so we have our, our dark chocolate, our dark gold, I call it. So we're, yeah, there we go. We're lighting it up right now. Okay. Yeah, showing it. So dark gold, so your dark chocolate. Yes. Then and it, we have our princess bar, which is 50%. So it's still a dark milk chocolate. It's not a candy, as it were. It's still... There we go. Go with that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a milk chocolate, but it has a low percentage of milk for people that still like that kind of creamy... Uh, flavor to yeah. the chocolate, but they could still feel good about it. So that is just the cacao, um, milk, and cane sugar. So, um, and what are, did you say that the percentage? So um, the milk chocolate mm-hmm. has 50%. 50%. So that's these, the princess bar. Yes. Okay. Then the next one, we have coconut dream. Which is a unique flavor, yeah, to Trinidad is the coconut dream. There it is. <laughs> so that's sixty-five oh, percent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that has toasted coconut on top, and it's made with coconut milk. So for people that like milk chocolate but are vegan, uh, they can eat this bar. Lovely. That's yeah. that's so lovely. And then the the one that let's see, this one is let's see this down. Yeah, so we also have oh, our these, mini bars. Okay, the dark chocolate for gold. people that these just are... want a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. We have a half size bar and a full size bar. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so we could do a sample of that if you'd like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna let you open it okay. up properly and I'll try that. I have my dog in the room, so we have to be careful because dogs shouldn't eat chocolates. We're not going to drop anything. Um, So, and can I ask you about the price point of the bars? Because you think that, you know, these bars that are, it's unfortunate that organic and sustainable food Mm -hmm. uh, is more expensive. But, you know, now hearing the process behind it, Mm -hmm. try this. Yeah. Now hearing the process behind it makes sense to me because it is very labor intensive. Right. And it is. A, you know, there's so many stages to building a bar. Right. So, okay, here we go. Okay. I'm doing the taste test. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. <laughs> I'm a huge, huge chocolate fan. Mm. And like I said, I just have to find, I've been on this mission mm. to find something that's healthy Mm-hmm. but satisfies, you know, the craving for chocolate. Yes. It's yeah. not just a craving. It's just mm-hmm. a liking. It's a love of, Lo- you know. Yeah, love, appreciation of, yes. So, yeah. yeah, so the price point, this is so good. Thank you. Um, oh, my so- goodness. <laughs> As you said, it's very labor intensive, and Maruga chocolate, we oversee the whole process from bean to bar. Mm-hmm. And um, because we're the cocoa farmers and the chocolatiers, we charge a $8 price point for the large bars, mm-hmm. and the small bars are 4 But we do a special of 3 for 20 for the large bars. Okay. And then the small, 3 for 10 And I have to say, it's very rich. Yes. You don't need to eat much to get no. the satisfaction. Right. And you let it just, as they say, melt in your mm-hmm. mouth because you get all these different flavors. It's you know? so good. I can. Yeah. The cocoa is mm-hmm. so... Um, front and center you know mm-hmm. it's so dominant mm-hmm. in in like you know it's still <laughs> it feels so good mm-hmm. to um you know i don't know i don't think it's a lot of things have sugar in it mm-hmm. and i know for me with chocolate it isn't the sugar that i'm craving or that right. i like mm-hmm. it is the taste and flavor mm-hmm. and and again 
I, I just couldn't find something that made sense to me until mm-hmm. I tasted your bars. Yeah, because and a lot of the chocolates out there are waxy, like you that's said. That's what I, yeah. Just so processed. Because of all the fill, fill, yeah. uh, fillers yes. and emollients and mm-hmm. all these things that they put in and preservatives so mm-hmm. they can go, you know, f- from farm to truck to and travel to stores right. everywhere in the world. and. Mm-hmm. They have, sit on the shelf. They have a shelf life of forever, really. Yeah, yeah. And it tastes it. You can taste that mm-hmm. preservative that's preserving them. Whereas, what is the lifespan so of this? So if it's stored properly, one year. And and what went well? That's not bad. Mm-hmm. When chocolate is it true that when chocolate goes bad, it gets white? Yes. Yeah, so there's a thing called bloom. So what happens to the chocolate? You'll see white spots. Maybe sometimes you've seen that before in your yes. own chocolate. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean the chocolate is bad. It's just the separation that occurs where the cocoa butter um, starts to rise to the top, and that's usually yeah. a temperature thing. So sometimes if you put it in the fridge, you'll see that like you know it'll get white spots. Um, or if, you know, the chocolate has gone in and out of temper, sometimes that'll happen. Okay. So that's a huge part of the chocolate process that I didn't talk about before is tempering. So to yes. make cho- to craft chocolate, I use a tempering machine and then sometimes I, you know, will do it by hand. But you have to raise the temperature of the chocolate, you know, to a melting point mm-hmm. and then you bring it back down. And then the um, it's, it has this like crystallized structure form in the chocolate that gives it that nice snap. You heard when we broke the yeah chocolate. that it snapped. Yeah, so yeah. there's uh, there's a chemistry that's involved in making chocolate. It has to be at the right temperature point. Okay. Yes. Oh, very interesting. So and for that's what gives it the glossy. That glossy look, look yeah, too. Yeah. So, and for storage, what should people know about storing a good organic yeah, chocolate like this? Yeah, in a, in like a cool, dry place is best. Okay. You know, so it's, I mean, if cool, you're Cool, dry like your pantry? Yeah, like okay. in, a, in a pantry, yeah. But be fine. not your refrigerator or freezer. Right. I mean, you can, but it's best if you'll experience the, the real cocoa flavor, the best if it's just left like at room cool, temp. dry room temp. Yeah, room temp. Okay. Yeah. Good. So. Not in the direct sun. Right. I mean, yeah. I know in summer months and stuff, it can get hot and so on, so people worry about their chocolate melting. Yeah. So, I mean, you can always put it in the fridge if, if that's the case. But Yeah. You know. Some people just really like cold. I have friends that... Um, you know, like dark chocolate, and not that they're getting this high quality that you have, but they'll only eat it if it's frozen. Oh. <laughs> and I don't, I prefer it room temp, uh-huh. always have, or melted over mm-hmm. something, you yes, know. I yeah. do love chocolate covered fruits, dry yes. fruits, and things like that. Just that, um, those textures and flavors always mm-hmm. are, are very satisfying for me personally. But yeah. um, I don't know. I've seen so many people think that they can sustain the life of chocolate by putting it in the freezer, and that's right. not really the case. Right. And so another product that I forgot to talk about is this jar here, the yes. cocoa. Yes, go ahead. You can yeah. hold that up. We this can. is cocoa powder. Um, you can put it in front of my camera if you want to hold it up. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we have the, the cocoa, ground cocoa, and this is 100% pure Trinidad cocoa, which is what grows in the region. Right. And so this is uh, $8 a bar just because it's pure, you know. Okay. I mean, a jar. Uh, uh, a jar. jar. Yeah, I was going to say a bar. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this people can add to their smoothies, put on top of oatmeal. They can grind it down finer even. Um, you know, you can add it to make a hot chocolate out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can, you know, add so, it to boiling water and sugar or mil- whatever milk and alternative it, and that it you like. And it dissolves? Yes, it and it dissolves. Dissolve. Yeah, so okay. you can, um, a traditional drink in Maruga is cocoa tea, which is our hot chocolate. Oh, how's that made? Yeah, so you put the, the ground cocoa and you boil it uh-huh. for, for a while. And then like the cocoa butter, the fats come to the top. And then you add milk, sugar, and different spices. Uh, cinnamon, nutmeg. They oh, have like yum. this type of <laughs> bay leaf type of thing that they have there. Um, and, you know, you add that. So it's a spiced hot chocolate, but it's very rich. Oh, wow. Yes. It sounds amazing. And you can use it in your cooking, too. You know, like yeah. if you want to make brownies, whatever. Because you know? this has the consistency. It almost looks like that instant coffee yes. is what it looks like yeah. a little bit. But if you put that, let's say, in a coffee grinder, is that what you mean by grounding it down even yes. more to like a powder? Yes. So if you wanted to make it, you know, even finer, you can do that. Or yeah. some people really like when it's chunkier because they can kind of uh, make it uh, the way that they want to. They want to make it. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. Mm-hmm. So it's another. So these are all the products you have, yes. all the different flavors of bars, mm-hmm. the different size of the bars, and the cocoa. Right. 
very, yes. very, very cool. Yeah. I think you need to get yourself out there so the yeah. you know the general population can really find you. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that we highlighted you today yes, so you can so let people find you. So mm -hmm. tell us um, a little bit about, because we're, we're down to the last couple of minutes, mm -hmm. what your master plan is here okay. for, um, for the chocolate and, and everything that you're trying to create. And then I'm going to have you leave us with some final words of wisdom, okay. you know? <laughs> yeah, so my master plan is to continue production in a sustainable way in Maruga, you know, uh, employing locals. Um, we still do the organic method, no, no additives, no preservatives, you know, keep it natural. And now I'm getting into the California market where, you know, I was born and bred. Yeah. So now, you know, as I said, we do events and so on. But now we're looking at uh, selling in stores. Um, I want to target more natural stores, healthy, organic, yeah. you know, that market. Um, Are you yeah. doing all the marketing yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I do all the marketing myself. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And tell me how often you said you're li living between here and Trinidad. Yes. So how does that work? So I, I do my business in both places. Um, as I said, I get the cacao from Trinidad and, and ferments on dry everything right. there. And I, you know, we make chocolate here and down there. So um, I have businesses in both countries. OK. Yeah. So, so where's your husband? He's in Trinidad right so, now. So, so yeah. does he come back and forth too with you? He or? has a. Well, he has to run the museum and okay. the whole operation. So it's really you who's doing yes. the travel. Yeah. So I have to, you know, establish the business down um, over here, and and now I'm foreseeing we're going to grow it more and more. You know. Yes. Yes. Did you get married here or in Trinidad? In Trinidad. Oh, you did a beach wedding. Oh, <laughs> of course. We're on an yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, three years, four years in um, June. Well, yeah. that's exciting. <laughs> You're yeah. still somewhat of newlyweds. Yes. But it, and you've got this great business to grow together and mm -hmm. you're also employing local people you're giving uh employment to people who otherwise would have not been able to do something like this right. which is i just love that whole thing i just mm -hmm. love the whole full circle that yeah, it's doing getting the community involved yeah you know, it's so important to me. i i just mm -hmm. amazing what you're doing that you did mm -hmm. in such a short time and i'm so glad i mm -hmm. ran into you your chocolate was just i mean i felt like i had a sling around my neck and i was <laughs> <laughs> to your table yeah and I'm so glad that I did it you know because mm -hmm. I like I said I was on a mission and I feel like mission accomplished here Fantastic. and if I can help yes. you in any way we'll you know we'll mm -hmm. keep trying to get you out there and I'll keep talking you up to everybody I know okay. that you know because you're here in the Southern California area when mm -hmm. you get it you know in stores mm -hmm. so uh say one more time how people can reach you so we have a website, marugacoco.wordpress.com, or also on social media. Instagram is Maruga Chocolate. Then on Facebook, we have our different Facebook pages as well. Our email is marugachocolate at gmail.com. Yay. Okay. Because yes. some people listen and they're not mm -hmm. watching the screen. So I wanted you to say it again. Right. Some final words of wisdom to leave my audience with because I like everybody to go away on a good note. Okay, good. Um, I just hope everyone enjoys this pure, organic, natural chocolate and People can feel good about themselves and their body when they eat this chocolate. Right. We definitely yes. hit all the benefits, and yeah. it's so lovely. Catherine, thank you for coming and taking the time while you're here mm -hmm. in California to yes. uh, come on my show and talk about something that actually does benefit people and um, makes people happy, too. It's yeah. so cool. Well, thank you for I having me on your show, Debbie. Oh, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Loved highlighting you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you, my audience, for joining us today. And remember, I want you to keep going, finding those conversations that lead to a healthier you. Bye, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye now.